We praise your name. We creator of heaven and earth. The God that has no beginning of days. Neither end of days. We bow to worship you. We lay our crown before you. Crowns of our riches. Crowns of our successes. Crowns of our power. Crowns of our achievements, crowns of our knowledge, we lay them before you. We confess you are the Almighty. There is none like you. We bow to worship you who is worthy to be praised and to be honored. Nothing can do without you. You can do without all things. Glory be to your name. Thank you for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Thank you for Wednesday. Thank you for Thursday. Thank you for Friday. Thank you for Saturday. Thank you for Sunday today. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for the climax of this meeting for these days. Thank you for reserving the best for the last. At this moment, Lord, we ask the heaven that is already opened, let it be wider. Amen. Let it be bigger. Amen. Let everybody be accommodated. Amen. Let every blessing not be missing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, for everyone in agreement saying amen. Let a double portion of new beginning of blessing come upon them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, mighty Father. For Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Your blessing, Jesus' name. Thank you very much, choir. You're highly appreciated. Wonderful choir. International choir. God bless you. It's well with you. Please, you may be seated. I want to appreciate everyone in the house this afternoon for being present at this moment. I want to appreciate you for having been following up 
this program right from the very first day, seven days of glory, the eighth anniversary of this program. I want to thank a pastor in charge of the province and the wife. I want to thank them passionately. God bless you, sir, for giving us the opportunity to be part of this colorful, wonderful, blessed meeting. Uh, most of us have been online because we couldn't have come to spend seven days here. And we have been following up. Thank God today we are live and direct physically. God bless you. Sir. God bless you, man. I want to thank our pastor in charge of the region, a very good friend, Pastor Obasa. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to come. If you say, don't come to my domain, I will not come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to thank all the great ministers of God that are in the house. God bless you for being the lifting hand to our pastor and in this program. All the members, all the workers, all the ministers, the Lord bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. What is happening in this place is not very common. It's very uncommon. It's not something that is very regular. At any point in time, at any place, with any people, God is always raising somebody to be a light, a beacon, as it were, to lead others in praising him and in serving him. I want to thank God that in this axis, we have one. It's not uncommon. Amen. I want to encourage us never to take all that has been happening for granted. Don't take them for granted. Don't trivialize it. They are not normal. I want to encourage you to take advantage of it, cash into it, believe all that is going on as if all your life depends upon it. And that's all about faith. And before you know it, the Almighty God will really sort you out. Praise the Lord. When things like this happen, it's just for somebody's happiness. And I'm sure whatever needs to happen for your happiness to be complete, the Almighty God will put them for you in Jesus' name. I've been, like I was just telling the pastor, I've been following the train. My mind was that for these seven days, that it was a praise party. Praise party. He told me that the praise party had, was it on Friday or so? I said, ah, I thought it started from Monday. I've been following. I said, well, just reasoning. I said, ah, I know there are different types of parties. I've been involved in parties. I hear about parties. I've read about parties in the Bible. Of all the parties, I've never heard about this type of party. <laughs> Amen. I know about birthday party. Birthday party in the Bible. Like it happened to Herod in Matthew chapter 14. He marked his birthday. Remember, it was that birthday that orchestrated the beheading of John the Baptist. Remember that story? Yes. In that birthday, what featured there was eating and drinking. Also went to the Old Testament in the book of Esther. I saw another party that was being thrown. And that party was the party of King Ahasuerus. Esther chapter 1 from verse 3 to 9. Esther chapter 1 from verse 3 to 9. In that party, King Ahasuerus in Shushan was to show his kingdom 
was to show off his wealth. And he called all his ministers, all over 120 nations he was ruling, to show his achievements. Of course, that also led to asking the wife, Vasti, to come and show that she was beautiful. You know the end of the story. In that particular party, it was also wine and eating. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm coming to the main message very briefly. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 13, God said there, he said food and the belly, they shall all be destroyed. So what people party about are things that do not have eternal consequence. There are things that do not glorify God, but glorify me. And here, it's a praise party. I started raising at it. Praise party. I said, this is awesome. This is great. The Lord said in Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. He said, whosoever praises me, glorified me. So I started seeing great men and women, mighty population of people raising their hands, glorifying God. I say, indeed, these people are in for a blessing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This kind of party, Psalm 67, Psalm 67, I'm going to somewhere, from verse 5 to 7, he says, let the people praise you, O Lord. He said, when the people praise you, what will happen? The earth shall yield a increase. You don't even know what is happening. That the earth is already yielding an increase for you. Yes. And he went ahead and said, and our God, our own God, will do what? Shall bless us. Which means what you have done for these seven days, what you have done for these seven days, <laughs> it will take your neighbors to help you to carry the blessings. Is somebody in the house hearing me? I say it will take your neighbors to come to help you by reason of the blessings of the Lord. What does the blessings of the Lord do? What does it do? It make it rich. Hallelujah. No more sorrow. I'll say no more sorrow. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Our main topic this evening, very briefly, is anointing for new beginning. Amen. This is the eighth anniversary. And number eight is significant. Eight is the number of new beginning. What you have seen before is a child's play. I say what Champion Cathedral has seen before is a child's play. Get ready. Who is the Champion Cathedral? Shout hallelujah. It's not this building. You are the Champion Cathedral. You are. You are the individuals. So get ready. First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. Verse. From verse 11 to 13. That was very briefly. Anointing for a new beginning. First Samuel chapter 16. From verse 11 to 13. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Twelve. And he sent and brought 
him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at, to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. I would like to corroborate this particular passage we have read with Psalm 89. Psalm 89 from verse 20 to 24. You can protect it. Psalm 89 verse 20 to 24. He said, I have found David my servant with my holy oil. Have I anointed him? 21. With whom my hand shall be established. My arm shall also strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. Hallelujah. The first scripture we read is part of the anointing service, anointing and impartation service that held in the house of Jesse. We know the story very well. In Bethlehem, that service held there as he's holding today here in Champion Cathedral. In attendance to that service were the elders of the city. The elders came. I'm sure there are some elders here too. And all the eight children of Jesse, all of them were present. You can find that in verse 5. That anointing service was a new beginning. It was to be a new beginning so whoever will be anointed. That was why it held. As this anointing service also will be a new beginning to everyone that is anointed. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Incidentally that day, it was David that was finally anointed. It was David. You know, a father in the law will say, whenever the Lord says there is somebody here, it may not just mean one person. It could be multitude. May I announce to us that as many David that are here, the anointing service of this afternoon is for you. Amen. Your new beginning will start. Amen. If you are the one, say better, Amen. It was David. Why? Because it was already predetermined. God had already predetermined it. Even without David knowing, God had already predetermined it. You may think you just came here just because you wanted to come. Or because you want to be part of these seven days of glory. Or maybe if you didn't come, the pastor will notice that you didn't come. Let me assure you, God had already predetermined and ordained your coming to this anointing service. That he may anoint you. All that God has for you, you don't know them. You don't know what God has in stock for you. But by reason of this anointing, the manifestation of these things will begin to show forth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody can know what God has in mind for him or her. Nobody. The day I became born again, I was invited to a fellowship. As I was going, I was quarreling. 
Why was the quarrel? So that I will go back. Yes, I wanted them to offend me. So that I will not go to that fellowship. But I didn't know God had arranged it for me. Reluctantly, I went to that fellowship. And by the time I got there, as if it was not a place I used to pass, my eyes were just opened. I saw many cars in front of the, of the fellowship, in front of the church, many cars. And something asked me. I didn't know the voice of God then. And that thing asked me, say, do you have a car? I said, no. That's where God started arresting me. I said, I didn't have a car. And I followed the people that I was quarreling with. I entered into the auditorium. As they sat in the fellowship, the, the man that was there on the chair, he was the regional manager of a bank. And that one was this. And that, ah, this lawyer, this one, ah, big, big man. And that thing asked me again, are you up to any of these ones? I said, no. That was when I broke down. So everything they were preaching, all those things were now resonating in my spirit. And before I knew it, by the time the man made an altar call, he was not a bishop. He was not a pope. He was just an ordinary man, ordinary member that was preaching. Before he made the altar call, I ran forward. I said, I wanted to surrender my life to Christ. From that day, for over 34 years till today, God just turned my life around. I can see everything. 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 Oh my God. I can see everything. Turning around. Can you see it? Turning around. Can you see it? Turning around. For my good. Hallelujah. You may be seated. What am I saying? That you don't know all that God has for you. But because you have come today, you begin to see the unfolding of all that God has prepared for you. Your destiny is a glorious one. Praise the Lord. It was David that day because it was predetermined. Amen. When we talk about anointing, we know it's the supernatural power of God. That's anointing. Supernatural presence of God. Manifesting through the Holy Spirit. In a person, in an object, in a place. The anointing can be represented by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be represented by fire, by oil, by water, etc., it is the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of man, to anoint people with oil. It's the wisdom of God. It didn't originate from man. When God found David in Psalm 89, where we read, he said, I found David, my what? Whom, whom I will do what? Anoint with my holy oil. Even when God had raised David, found David, he did not just allow David to go to the throne. He didn't. He didn't. Until he had anointed him. May I let you know that all the Lord has done for you since Monday till today, the miracles the signs, the wonders. God will not want you to just go like that without anointing you. The reasons are clear. Because without the supernatural presence of God, the battle is still there outside. The enemy is waiting to see you come 
and begin to enjoy that which you have received. He's waiting. And the only thing that can give you a guarantee, a buffer, a backup, the strength to be able to withstand is what? The anointing. Why? Because the anointing breaks the yoke. And every yoke that the enemy wants to put back on you. Many preachers, they have preached. They have prophesied. You have seen signs and wonders. You may even have fallen down and stood up. But may I let you know that the enemy will no longer be able to exact upon you after tonight. If you believe that, say a better amen. We're not going to waste so much time on this message. But I want us also to reflect on what it means when we talk about new beginning. What is new beginning? New beginning is a fresh start. A fresh start of something. There are many of us today that are saying, oh, I wish I have a new beginning. A fresh start in business, a fresh start in marriage, a fresh start in career, a fresh start in my endeavors. There are people that have that kind of prayer in their minds. So that I wish. New beginning, fresh start of something. It can be a fresh start of something that you have been doing before. Like a routine. You see, life is a series of new beginning. Life is a series of new beginning. Every day you do the same thing. You wake up in the morning, pray, brush your mouth, prepare and go to work. Tomorrow will you do the same thing? Yes. Next tomorrow will you do the same thing? Yes. Life is a series of new beginnings. But then, the quality of the new beginnings every day is very important. It's very important. Your new beginning can be something that has never happened before. Many of us here may be desiring something that has never happened before to happen in their life. By the wisdom of this new beginning and this topic, what has never happened before, please take note, what has never happened before will happen to you. That good thing that has never happened before will happen to you. Happen to your children. Happen to your family. Happen to your husband. Happen to your ministry. If you believe that, shout three powerful amen. May the Lord bring it to pass in Jesus' name. That's the beginning for you. Whenever there is anointing, a lot of things happen. A lot of things happen. There will be new beginnings. Amen? There will be a turnaround. Look at David's case in 1 Samuel 16. After that anointing, what happened? The Spirit of God came upon him. That Spirit that came upon him started the new beginning. That Spirit that came upon him. There's a Spirit that is coming upon you. What did that Spirit do? In verse 13, the Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. From that day forward. Look at it. The Spirit of God came upon him. From that day forward. I like that word, forward. He didn't say from that day backward. After the anointing service of today, it will be forbidden for anybody in this anointing service to go backward again. I say it will be forbidden. Please 
believe the word of God. Believe the prophecies. It will come to pass. Say, after today's anointing service, it is forbidden for me to go backward again. It is for me. It is forbidden for me to lose my investment. It is forbidden for me to have disappointments. If you believe that, shout Amen. Amen. So anointing is antidote for backwardness. It's antidote for backwardness. No more backwardness. Amen. What happened to David again was that a door of higher level of his musical ministry was opened unto him. After that anointing, a higher door was opened unto him. He became the music minister to the king. A man from the bush because of anointing now became the music minister of a king. What other music ministry could you have that can be better than ministering to a king? He said, okay. You are a minister. You are now the minister. You'll be ministering to a president. Do you know what it means? You are now be ministering to a, a, the president. That was what happened to David. What again do you need? I pray that that anointing that will give you the visibility, that will make people recognize you, that will take you to places. As you take it this afternoon, that anointing will lead you there in Jesus' name. Yeah. The anointing gave him favor and access to the king's palace. In verse 21 and 22, he had access to the king's palace. Anointing can give access. Anointing gives access. To the king's palace. He did not just only have access to the king's palace. He was even loved by the king. It's not enough to have access to people. And for the people to love you. It's not. It's, it's, I mean it doesn't happen that way. You may be with somebody. And it may not be a blessing to you. You will be in a congregation. That congregation will not be a blessing to you. But after this anointing, wherever you go, you will find favor. Favor with God. Favor with men. Favor with God. Favor with men. Favor with God. Favor with men. It shall be so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to summarize, the success story of every man begins from the anointing, success story of any child of God, when the anointing is there. It begins from the anointing. When we talk about anointing, you know, it manifests in different ways. God can anoint you for business. God can anoint you for ministry. God can anoint you for healing. God can anoint your mouth as an orator. You know, there are people that can talk very well. Oh, God. When they are talking or preaching, they won't swallow saliva. And you begin to read, oh, how, where, what, all, this, all this wisdom, where are they getting it from? Have you seen such people? They talk, 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 they won't swallow saliva. And everything they say will be on point. That's anointing. So we're not talking about anointing. Don't think that it's just to make you wave your hand like this. People will fall on the ground. No, 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 no. no. He can anoint you in different ways. You can be anointed in your husband's house. Anything you cook, this man will come and lick it and say, what a wonderful wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord said, I have found David, my servant. 
Psalm 89, verse 20. He said, I found David my servant. As I close, anything found, there are two possibilities to it. Anything found, there are two possibilities to it. One, either that thing was lost, was missing, and it was searched. You can miss something, you can lose something, miss your money. And you carefully search for it. And as you carefully search for it, in the end, you'll find it. That's one possibility. When God said, I found David, it means he was searching for David. David was lost. He was in the bush. When others were supposed to come to be anointed at the palace, he was not seen. Every one of us have been lost as a result of our sins. And the Lord searched us and found us. The Bible says Jesus Christ came to seek them that are lost. We have been lost. Every one of us have his own story to tell. I was a sinner. But when the Lord found me, I became a saint. That's why that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rage like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Was love, but now I see. Sing it again. Amen. Sing grace. How sweet the that it are rich like me. I was once lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now can see. was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears release how precious thee that grace appear the hour I fast Believe. Every one of us, we have been lost. And there are many that even now, they are still lost. The Lord has not found them. The Lord has not discovered them. So two possibilities. Anything lost, found, must have been lost. Another possibility, anything lost, Anything found, please, can be a new thing entirely. May I announce to us that God is going to find us as new instruments in his hands after this anointing service. New thing entirely. When David was anointed, he started experiencing new things entirely. How many of us were born when COVID-19 came? COVID-19. How many of us witnessed COVID-19? Yes, we heard about it, isn't it? But we were told that the vaccine was also discovered. That vaccine was a new thing. 
something very new that has not happened to you. If there is nothing you will go home with this afternoon, after this anointing, go home with that particular prophecy. That something new that has not happened before is going to happen to you. And it shall be so in the name of Jesus. It shall be so in the name of Jesus Christ. Until the Lord has found you through salvation, the anointing will be useless, will not work. Until the Lord has found you, has located you, the anointing will not work. Therefore, this afternoon, we have opportunity. Can you say the Lord has found me? Can you say with certainty, with assurance, that I know the Lord knows me. He has found me. I have this confidence. He's with me. He hears me. I hear him. He talks to me. I talk to him. If you don't have that assurance yet, please, before this anointing will work for you, instead of creating more problems to you, please just hand over your life to him. Surrender to him. When you surrender to him, then the anointing will begin to work. Shall we stand? Amazing grace. How sweet. Why well, help us well? to do in your life may be different from my own life. Are you sick? You want the anointing this evening to break the yoke of sickness? Is that barrenness? Is that poverty? Are you in fear? Are you lonely? Are you disappointed? Are you facing battles in the night? Are you reproached? What do you want this anointing to do? Just begin to think about it. Reflect it. Reflect it. Is there anyone that wants to give his life to Jesus? Just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you wherever you are. I know you may not be able to come here. Wherever you are, just lift up your hand. Say, Lord, I surrender to you. Just lift up those hands. Is there any hand like that? Say, Lord, I want to surrender to you. Let this anointing work for me. Let these seven days not be a waste. Anyone like that, wherever you are. 
Can I see any hand anywhere? Is anyone thank you at the back there? If there is anyone, even if it's only one person, you never can tell what God has arranged for you. If I did not go back that day and God saved me and turned around my life, today, as you give your life to Jesus, you will see what you will see. If there is anyone like that, you can just come forward, just come forward, I want to pray with you. Just come forward. If there is anyone like that, assuming all these days, is there anyone you want to be very sure? Wherever you are, wherever you are, There are new people in the house. Just come forward. Come forward. I want to pray with you. Something is going to happen to you. When I did it, oh Jesus. God is good. Please just come forward. We don't have much time. Just come. Just come. The miracle is for you. The blessing is for you. The open door is for you. This is the last day. How can you miss it? If you are not sure of your salvation, please come forward. I still see a man that is supposed to come here. Whoever you are, whether a man or a woman, please come. Please, I understand there are different halls. If you are giving your life to Christ, please just move to the front of where you are. Whichever of the hall you are, just move to the front. The Lord sees you. The Lord knows you. God is not a man. That is why he's going to do something in your life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let me pray for you. Stop that thing you are doing. Stop that thing. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Your word has gone forth. They have heard. They have believed in their hearts. They have confessed with their mouth. Almighty God, wherever they are, in the different halls that have decided to surrender their life to you, to hand over the management of their life to you, Father, take over in Jesus' name. As you did for me, and since that time, I have witnessed the turnaround. My life is getting better and better every day. I have nothing to regret about. I lack nothing. Lord, let it be their portion in Jesus' name. Lord, because they have come to give their life to you, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them. We ask, oh God, that whatever their sins may be, let the blood wash away their sins in Jesus' name. That beginning from today, the power to go and sin no more, let them receive in Jesus' name. Whatever had been the consequences of their sins, Whatever the influence of those consequences had been in their life, retarding them, making them to go backward, let it be destroyed and banished in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, write their names in the book of life. Cancel their names in the book of death. Lord, the power to serve you to the very end, grant unto them in Jesus' name. If the trumpet will sound tonight, let them be with you in your paradise. Glory be to your name. Thank you, faithful Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.